Here's another example. Imagine this. You're a pretty well-known uh, sculpture artist. Lucky you. And you sell your sculptures for, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50 grand. Lucky you. You're flipping through a box of old postcards and you stumble across a, an image of some people, some white people holding a bunch of puppies. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm doing a series, an art you know, an art series or an exhibit called Banality, which is about the banal, the boring American experience, the trite American experience. You know, so cutting edge, or you're so cutting edge as a sculpture artist. And um, you're like, cool, like, I'm going to make this into a sculpture. You make it into a sculpture, and you sell the sculpture, I believe, for like 25 grand for a lot of money. And then, um, uh, sorry, Art Rogers the photographer of the, the postcard that you pulled out sues you. And your name is Jeff Koons. And <laughs> you claim fair use, okay? And uh, you go to court, um, and let's just look at this, okay? So Jeff Koons' use, turning this photograph into a sculpture. Now we know from what we've learned today that taking someone's artwork in translating it or transforming it into another copyrighted artwork constitutes a derivative, okay? Now, we have to look at in purpose, okay? Is the work that you make, is it simply derivative, i.e. exploitative, or is it transformative? Does it add value, change the meaning, build upon, etc.? In this case, Jeff Koons' artwork is part of a piece that's a satire on the American experience. It's not a direct commentary on the photograph itself. In fact, it exploits the photograph and therefore is derivative and therefore is not fair under purpose. Nature of the original. Is it creative or is it a work of, 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 of fact or nonfiction? Well, Listen, it's barely creative, but you know, Art Rogers got the people to pose. He took the picture. It's creative, therefore not fair. Okay, um, amount used, all of it and the heart of the work, not fair. Market harm, markets are probably very different. However, because it's a derivative, he infringes on Art Rogers' market or marketability to license the photograph to be interpreted or made into a derivative sculpture and therefore not fair use. And the court said that basically it's not a fair use, it's so substantially similar, which means amount used and means it was completely derivative and not transformative and it infringed on the market and everything. Not fair use, not fair use. Okay. Well, your name is Jeff Koons, you're a famous artist, <laughs> and you learn your lesson. <laughs> Um, Jeff Koons in 2006 um, used this, um, this image here from an Allure magazine taken by a photographer. I can't remember her first name, but her last name is Blanche. Um, and incorporated it into this artwork. I don't know what it means, but it's saying something. Um, and she, he took this fashion photo from Allure and used it in, in this artwork. Now, uh, Blanche sued uh, Koons, you know, and he claimed fair use. Okay, when it went to court, uh, let's see, purpose. Does it simply exploit uh, the original? Does it build upon? Does it add value? Does it incorporate it into a different whole that creates a whole different meaning and says something different? It does. And under purpose, it's a fair use. Nature of the original. We know it's creative. It's a creative photograph. Not fair. Amount used. He used the whole damn thing. Not fair. Market harm. Does it replace the original in the marketplace? Does it infringe on the artist's ability to license? Possibly. So we'll sit in the middle on market harm. But the reason why there's probably no market harm is that it's so transformative under purpose. If you transform it enough under purpose, it doesn't matter if you could license it or there's a market for licensing. So it's a fair use. All right. Question. Can you own the copyright on a tattoo? The answer is yes, but only on the intangible, just like graffiti. Meaning this, if you draw an original piece of art 
that someone tattoos on their body, you own the copyright on the art itself, not as it is on their body, okay? Now, um, this came up with The Hangover 2, where Ed Helms', Ed Helms character got a Mike Tyson-style face tattoo. Now, um, what ended up happening was the graffiti, uh, the graffiti, the tattoo artist sued, he filed an injunction, which means that um, they would have to delay the uh, release of the movie uh, until this was settled. Um, and the question is, you know, does he own the copyright on it? Now, Mike Tyson can do whatever he wants with that image on his face. He could remove it, tattoo over it. It doesn't matter. But can you reproduce that copyrighted image on his face? Can you pull it off that wall, essentially, and reproduce it? on another character or whatever? And the answer is no, okay? Could I get that tattoo on my body if I wanted? Yeah, I could. Would he sue me for it? No, unlikely he would ever see it. But if it's for commercial purposes and I'm reproducing that for effect in a movie, copyright infringement. He was able to sue, um, you know, they settled out of court. Um, and, and he got paid. So of course you can own tattoos, but only the intangible element, meaning you don't own what's on that person's body, you own the reproduction of that, um, which leads us to the next thing, which is Solid Oak Sketches versus Take Two. A lot of this is um, about tattoos on NBA players that Solid, uh, Solid, Sketch, Solid Oak Sketches claims to own and have done. Um, Kenya Martin, LeBron James, and, and, and other players. And basically, you know, the question is, are, are the tattoos on NBA players um, in like the 2K game series copyrighted? The answer is yes. But is it a fair use to use them in video games or is it de minimis, meaning it's a minimal use and therefore not infringement? And basically what take Two saying is like, yo, Solid Oak is trying to just say they own every representation of those character of those uh, NBA players if those players pose in an advertising campaign and their tattoos are prominent they you know will they own that you know can they appear on TV and um, you know it, it begs this question you know like is what they're claiming what, what take two is claiming who's the game publisher is that this is a fair use um, because we're trying we're not exploiting them like uh, what's done in the hangover 2 we are reproducing the tattoos on game characters to authentically show them. Um, so we look at fair use. Is it transformative? Yeah, I mean, in a way it is because it's trying to accurately reproduce the characters for video games. Um, nature of the original, the tattoos are creative. It's not a fair use. Amount used the whole thing, not a fair use. Does it create market harm? That's unlikely. Um, this is still lingering, so they're still, still trying to figure this out. But LeBron said, my understanding is that my tattoos are a part of my body and my likeness, and I have the right to have my tattoos visible when people or companies depict what I look like. I always thought that I had the right to license what I look like to other people for various merchandise, television appearances, or other types of creative works, like video games. Again, this is still being decided. It has not been sort of figured out, but it will bring up an interesting, you know, uh, it begs an interesting question is, you know, we know you can copyright tattoos, but in which contexts are those fair uses? So reproducing someone's tattoos for a fictional movie is simply exploitative. But like, Licensing someone's image rights for video games from the league um, and they have tattoos on them, it's a, different, it's a different purpose. They're not trying to exploit the tattoos, they're just part of the characters in the game because that's what they have on their, on their bodies. So anyways, that's a little bit about art and appropriation. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two or three or four or actually made it to this point in the fucking video. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. It's great to see you. Um, it's the real Dr. Dre, Cinema Studies class here, Cine 230, Remix Cultures. Take care of yourselves. We will be back to talk about piracy, a.k.a. unauthorized uses, in a couple days here. Um, yeah, be well. Peace.